Masala, welcome to the executive talk. Uh, we meet at an investors conference uh, at the end of 2018. Uh, it has been a turbulent year for you blocks. I think it's fair to say uh, it hasn't been one of your best years. How, how does a CEO react to a, uh, let's put it that way, a turbulent year like, like this one? Yeah. So we, I would not call that a turbulent year, but it was a very rich year because we have created enormous new value for this company. We have brought out essential new products that will pave the way into the future and have enormous potential for new business. Uh, the current business for this year was not much growth. That's in fact so. We had some special uh, environments, uh, mainly in China, but also mm -hmm. in the Americas, that did not uh, help to develop uh, and to keep growth rates as before. But uh, finally, it's not something that is lost. It's just uh, displaced into the future. And we see, therefore, for 2019, a very good progress. Does that mean that as a CEO, you look more to the, to the future, you look more uh, at your pipeline, for example, at your products, and what, what success you might have uh, in the coming years, than, than uh, let's just say at 2018? You, you told me before this interview, uh, quite quickly, you said, uh, you know, I run a business, I don't run the, the, the stock markets, for example. Does that help you in your approach as a CEO as well, that you say, I'm, I'm in it for the long run as well? Absolutely, what we make is wireless technology. This we can only make with a long-term attitude. It's, it's complex things that we build together. It's several years of development until we have really uh, a success with a new platform. And also our customers are long-term oriented. They also take time to make their products and also maintain the products over a very, very long time. So it's really about the trend. It's what we call the mega trends that uh, must uh, be followed where we look into and how we then manage the company, where we put our efforts, and of course mainly in R&D. Mm -hmm. uh, the future looks bright. Uh, however, if, 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 you, if you look at this year again, uh, uh, you had to correct your figures twice. Um, the share price has dropped uh, dramatically almost. It's, it's half at where it has been at the, at the beginning of the year. Even if, if, if you allow yourself the, the, maybe the luxury not to look at the share price every day, uh, it's something you cannot kind of, kind of phase out, can you? No, I cannot phase it out. I'm also in front of investors almost every week. So, of course, uh, we have to generate value for our investors. However, these days are very special because all the market is correcting. It's not only our company, it's all the technology companies and, uh, and even more around us. Uh, so that's uh, what, what is currently the situation, it, it uh, is uh, uh, what shareholders see, mm -hmm. but this is not impacting what we think as a business, also what we see, what customers have in mind for the future. When we look at the impact uh, on your business, uh, one, you've, you've mentioned it uh, before, it's, it's, it's the trade tensions between the US and China, uh, which heavily impacted uh, the business of, of Ublox. That's something you cannot do there's nothing you can do against it. Uh, is that something frustrating as well for you as a CEO that you think those things are out of my hands? It's, it's just things that, that impact my company, but uh, uh, if, if they have, a, if they have a trade tensions, there's not so much I can do. Yes, indeed, uh, we, we cannot do much against that. And it is frustrating that such political issues finally hamper the, the wealth and hamper the progress. Uh, there, there can only be losers under such conditions, uh, as we all know. Uh, however, we are uh, a little lucky in the circumstances as we are uh, not manufacturing in China, we mm -hmm. have not uh, brought uh, foothold in the, in the US, so we, we are really a Swiss company in this regard, we are neutral and uh, directly we are not affected by all these tensions. However, if there was a, a macroeconomic impact that the overall economy is not developing as before, then of course everybody will suffer. It's interesting that in, 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 in the last years, you, you always stress that you don't want to have a, a Klumpenrisiko, as we say in Germany. You don't want to have, have uh, one client uh, who is too big, for example. So uh, in order to avoid uh, the, the pressure and avoid the danger of, of aiming too much uh, right at that, at that customer. However, when we look at the, at the political uh, situation, as we, as we just spoke about, uh, that might be another risk that, that you weren't really aware of in the beginning. So it's, it, 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 it goes to show that there's so many different factors that your, your, your company relies on, right? Yes, as, as always, the, the world is complex and we rely heavy, heavily on, on each other. I mean, in the whole supply chain, everybody relies on, on many partners. Uh, that is the fact. However, I think 
that we are a, a well diversified company that we are not dependent on a one customer or one range of customers makes us of course less vulnerable to such impacts because it will always be uh, a different situation in certain regions than in others. Uh, that also counts for pure economic changes. Uh, when we look back to 2008 and 2009 crisis, uh, clearly the, the impact was very different in the two regions, Americas, Europe and Asia. Our business, for example, has continually grown in Asia at this time, where this, it was highly impacted in Europe. Mm -hmm. It is a highly diversified market, also kind of a, a customer base. I think it's still the case that you don't have, uh, no customer has more than 6% of, of, of the revenue. And he once famously said, I don't want to be an Apple company, for example. I don't want to uh, be so, so, so depending on one company. Has there ever been a thought in the, in the last month maybe that maybe it would have been better if we had one strong uh, client we could depend on and who's maybe not involved in, in, in tensions, for example? Yeah. yeah, that might be a nice dream that you have such a nice uh, partner and customer. But finally, uh, the relationship is very different. When you have a large customer, then you must make everything for this customer. You become highly dependent and the customer is dictating what, what you need to do. And is of course also trying to take all your resources. This is precisely not what we want. We want to be uh, independent in this regard. We make it for a market, a market that is diversified over many customers and many applications. Uh, and it's our decision, where do we spend the resources, where do we optimize in this sense our effort to see then a, a maximum uh, shareholder return. And this is a philosophy that you cannot mix with the other. It's either you, you live for large customers and then you must do it right, and of course with all your efforts, or you do it as we do, we, we, we keep it diversified, we, we make a standard range of products and we sell it to a broad market. In my ears, that almost sounds like a Swiss approach. So having said that, uh, do you think that might be an asset coming from Switzerland or having that made, made in Switzerland uh, stamp that uh, you know, in a way you're almost on neutral ground and you can choose your customers and don't have to aim too much at one or the other. So uh, it gives you more freedom to, to kind of operate from Switzerland worldwide. Yes, in fact, uh, I think this is, this is a very important asset that we have no such dependencies and we do not uh, sort of work against uh, any customer. Uh, all our customers take us for neutral, take us uh, as, as their partner and uh, insofar uh, we have never seen limitations from this attitude. Uh, whether we are Swiss or not so Swiss, okay, it's for sure helpful we have a Swiss stamp. Is it helpful that you all come from, uh, let's say, as the same environment? I mean, the, 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 the company has, has not been around for that long. It's a spin-off from the ETH, one of the most successful spin-offs of the ETH, has to be said, uh, about 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago, a little bit. Um, uh, there were engineers uh, founding this company. All three are still in the company. Uh, you are an engineer as well. By, by, by nature, uh, coming from that environment, does that help also to kind of uh, create your own little DNA and your own little kind of, kind of uh, uh, work philosophy? Yeah, I think so, uh, in, 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 in se at several levels. I think first of all we are a startup, mm -hmm. and I think this mentality is still here and is still uh, even after 20 years. After you can 20 still, years, yeah. still uh, an attitude we take and a way of how we try to cooperate. Uh, also, we know it works uh, in such a uh, uh, way of how to deal with things and how to be pragmatic and how to keep uh, things lean and especially engage people that they deliver what is their maximum, uh, make them uh, really uh, taking part of the overall uh, processes we have and, and give them also the freedom for that. I think this is really a heritage that we have transported all over these 21 years and still can maintain it. That of course these founders are around is the best guarantee we still can maintain mm -hmm. such a culture uh, because they propel it every day by themselves. Uh, of course, this is their heart blood that, that people uh, can feel and also what they really as aspire for. They like it that there is such a, an attitude. And how is it for the, for the CEO who's been with the company for more than 10 years as well? You, you, you kind of 
you kind of uh, lived through the IPO of the company as well. So you've, you, you're, you're part of that DNA as well. However, there's still the three founders. Is that sometimes difficult? Do you feel a constraint sometimes as well? Oh, not at all. I mean, I'm in the company for 17 years, so I'm almost as long as the founders. Yes, absolutely. But I, I remember the very first day, so to say, yes, I had to become part of the team and to be sort of a, a co-founder, but not a founder <laughs> per se. Um, but uh, be, be, be the partner and uh, make it that we are together a strong team. And I think since these days, uh, we, there's, there's not a sort of a different difference between us. I, mean, yeah. I also live the same philosophy as my founders and uh, we have no difference here. And uh, that, of course, is a very nice outcome for us. And who creates the values? Who defines the values and, and, the, and the philosophy of the company? Is that the four of you together? Is it, is it a, a kind of a, a, a maybe more, more an egoistic or like a, a selfish approach by, by someone out of yeah. that? I think the values are really created by a team and it's first of all for sure we as an executive team the, the, that we do a lot because we maintain the same values together and find always the way how we go forward uh, but we also sort of transport it to the next level and also multiply it by that that uh, another 40 people are helping to create these values help to make the decisions and of course do the work every day do the hard work every day uh, I think this is essential. It's it's not never a one person in, in, in such a company mm -hmm. that can make it. It's much too complex. All the, the matters we have to deal with, all the knowledge you need to make it, you must quickly go to to a relatively broad level to bring all uh, uh, insights together. It, it's a complex uh, uh, topic, as you say. It's a complex product that you do. Uh, it's it's highly technological. It's highly technical as well. Uh, does it help that that you have that kind of technical approach with the team within the team as well? I think two thirds of the team are still working in R and D. Uh, they're they're heavily involved in in producing what what you do. Yeah. Having that that collective mindset does that help in in kind of bringing the the company forward? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we are more than 700 engineers and mm -hmm. I... Uh, Out of 1,000 uh, people. Out of 1,000, yes. And of course, uh, engineers are by nature people, they like to create something, to make yeah. something better and of course also to prove that they know something and have, uh, have also expanded the knowledge. And this is what you, what you need to propel. You must give these engineers the opportunity to live that and to give them the feeling, oh yes, I, I, I have a, a challenge, I have a high challenge, it's difficult, but I make it. I can make my success in developing something new and add on to the overall capability of this company and of course to the value that finally customers find. And, and this is the culture we need to, to maintain and, and constantly uh, also uh, check that these mm -hmm. challenges are here. I mean, we could not have engineers when they have just boring work, they would not stay with this company. We, we need to reinvent ourselves uh, every time to invent the next thing we need to develop, the next better idea we need to have. Uh, having said that, are you more an engineer or are you more a manager in your, in your current position? Oh, that's hard to distinguish. Uh, finally, I have also two, two uh, hats. I'm, I'm an engineer by training, but also I'm a business manager by yeah. training. And I think the combination is very essential for this company. Uh, I mean, I need to fully understand what we do here from a technology point of view. I, I, I need to be able to talk to anyone in the company and, and give a reasonable <laughs> talk. Yeah. Uh, but also, I must make sure we, 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 we think business, we think for the shareholders, we think for economics. And this is, of course, what makes my job very interesting here. Uh, you even have more than two heads. You have, uh, you're also head of sales and head of marketing. So you, you, you know or you must know how to communicate uh, what you do. And uh, we sometimes hear that in, in, in a technological field or in a highly technical field, that's the main challenge of a company, that you can actually communicate and actually explain to people who are, have no clue what you're doing. How, how difficult is that part that, you know, uh, I mean, a chip is a chip, but if, if you really explain it to someone who doesn't know about it, uh, how difficult is that? No, it's somehow difficult, but I think I have a good sense in making that uh, simplified, mm -hmm. in making that understood that also people with uh, little insight into such technology can get a grasp of, of what is this all about. And this was also the, the today's presentation to, uh, again, accomplish such an insight. Uh, when it goes deeper, I mean, I can also go deeper, but fortunately I have also, again, my team, uh, my founders and uh, all the, the other people that work together towards the customer, towards the environment. I mean, they do a brilliant job in communicating what are we making here and how mm -hmm. is this creating value. What you're making is highly 
future driven, as we said, and with the uh, uh, with, with the changing landscape and the, and the digital transformation, we, we are uh, we're only at the beginning of of, of this or slight beginning of, of this revolution. Uh, if you look at, at, at future trends like the Internet of Things, for example, where, where there's endless uh, opportunities for you as well, um, do you often feel that, that maybe we've been a bit too early with what we do now? Maybe the success was, was a bit too early, so, so you know, we, we can't really change things around anymore? Uh, or are, are, you, are you feeling completely confident that you're 100% you're ready for that, for, you know, really creating those new opportunities as well. Yeah, can we be always 100% confident and sure? I think no, yeah. but uh, insofar that's also why we can create value because we try to think ahead, we try to preempt certain trends and possibilities. And I like rather to be a little too early um, with, with ideas um, to, to really be on, on track and of course also invest into that. Shareholders have of course a little different view. Yeah, they only like to invest when it's all uh, watertight, yeah. but this, this, is, this cannot build success. Um, and this is uh, difficult in your area, right? That's, that's yeah. of course a difficult decision we have to take. Uh, what, what, is, uh, what is also quite helpful is finally it's not so critical. You have, you have always time to adjust and to still uh, tune uh, whatever you, you've developed to the real market, to then the, what is called the industrial dominant design. So uh, insofar you can also lean a little back and say, I have always the possibility to fine tune and, and build it to success. The pipeline is very important in that in that regard that you you are building new products and that you are kind of stay uh, 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 on top and stay you know the state of the art in in, in that regard. Uh, can you allow failure in that regard as well as a, as a manager? That you often hear that in in in, in research and development, uh, you know things fail and maybe out of ten only one is successful and but that helps us in the in the long run as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, I mean, you mentioned the pipeline. I think the most important thing is this pipeline remains filled because yeah. if, it, if we create a hole, we can never fill it later on because the throughput time is much too long. So may, keeping this pipeline well filled with next generation products, with next brilliant ideas, this is absolutely essential. And my experience is all these ideas finally generate the value. And we have never seen an instance that we were on a totally wrong track that we had to uh, finally discard ideas or products. Um, as I said, uh, there, there is some leeway to fine tune and you will, out of the good ideas you have, you will, you will find the market to mm -hmm. sell it successfully. And I think that is helpful because otherwise the, the equation would be a little too difficult to solve. <laughs> How can you promote ideas in a team? I mean, it's it's a, it's a, it's 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 a manager's task in a way. It's an executive's task as well. But you can you can probably approach it from all different ways. You could be a very brutal CEO or boss and a very demanding boss. Uh, when I read interviews and portraits about you, uh, they always write, he's a very calm personality. Uh, he likes the collective, he likes the group. He doesn't take himself too seriously, too importantly uh, either. Is, is that your kind of... Of, of, of management style as well to promote ideas as much as you can. Yes, I think that describes it very well. Again, I, I must ensure that my colleagues and the many colleagues are really contributing to the max, that they feel I have a freedom here to develop uh, ideas. I can bring it to the table, we discuss it, they have a fair chance that we bring it to decision. Yeah. And of course, except also, yes, we cannot do everything. We must make decisions. We have sometimes hard financial limitations, mm -hmm. and, but this is also good for decision making. And, and my task is to, to engage in this discussion, to make sure we have a, a sound dialogue, we, we keep uh, well everybody respected and participating in, in uh, this uh, overall process and finally in the good decision. Yeah. So I take from that you're not a brutal boss? No, absolutely not. I would kill the company. <laughs> <laughs> Something you also said in interviews is, is, you know, there's only so much I can do. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm doing my best and I'm, I'm the CEO of this company, yes, but I don't let things go too close or, or I don't take it too personally as well. Did that help you also in, in you know, if, 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 if a company isn't always that successful or doesn't go from one success to the other? You know, I think the, this is my attitude. I, I, I cannot keep my energy if I have not sort of this distance in a certain way. Um, and uh, staying calm. Uh, we also must leave with the fact uh, it's complex, it's risky, uh, not everything runs fine the first time, we often do a second turn, uh, but we know we make it and it's in this attitude that we, that we become successful. 
and insofar also accept a certain degree of failure uh, and uh, take that as a learning cycle that immediately we improve and then we know, yes, now we know how to do it. And mm -hmm. this is finally our uh, new IP because we have gone through this cycle. Uh, since we talk about you, you personally, I, I saw something very interestingly. Uh, interesting. You, 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 you were part in a study, in a survey, uh, where people asked CEOs about their, their personal health, about their, their health approach, attitude, how much they work. Um, and, and CEOs are often known for, for working uh, long hours and, and working very, very hard as well. Uh, how, would you, how would you scale yourself in that, in that, in that regard? Are you, a, are you almost a workaholic? Do you spend hours and hours and hours in, in, in your office at your job? You know, I think I'm con kind of call myself a workaholic. I, I work uh, long hours. I spend my energy for this company, but I also make sure I have relaxation. I can uh, recharge the battery. I keep uh, insofar also the fresh spirit to, I mean, finally you need to have a certain creativity. You need to see the new way to certain problems. And that I think is as much as important than that you work hard because mm -hmm. if you do not find the the right click in a certain moment of what to do, uh, then I think it becomes very hard to be a successful manager. Speaking of creativity, is it true that you play jazz on the piano? I do a little, yes, but uh, time is no longer that, that I'd be, a, be a, an artist, so to say. So not really professionally, <laughs> yeah. but, but artistry, that's another thing I read, and please correct me if, 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 if it's not true, but uh, you like to create houses, is that true? You like to design and, and do, yeah. is, that, is that some kind of, 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 of your, your way of dealing, you know, with, with maybe with the pressure at, uh, in your job? Yeah, I think uh, that that was for sure a nice other activity uh -huh. uh, where I could completely switch off from, from the So it's the actually designing life. houses or, or yeah. just like drawing? Uh, sort of, yeah. uh, but that was mainly connected to my family that was growing and uh, needed more space and uh, yeah. we, we uh, needed to expand. So it was of course also driven by a very important need. Uh, but insofar it's a few years back and uh, since then I have uh, not yet done another project. <laughs> but perhaps it's coming for another one. <laughs> Final question, speaking of you know, not a few years back but maybe a few years forward. Uh, how long will you, will, you, will you do that job that you're doing? Because I, I, I get the impression you're, you're, you're very much involved. It's, it's something you're very engaged in. Do you ever see that coming to an end or will you, will you, have, to be, you, know, will you have to be dragged out of your office sooner or later? <laughs> Hopefully not dragged out, but uh, I mean, uh, I, I really like the job. I think I can still contribute a lot and uh, I have sort of a flexible uh, limit uh, with regard to when I hand over, but I, I will prepare for this handover because I mean, uh, human beings are becoming older and mm. sometimes it's a time to give it into younger hands. And uh, this is of course something I will do, but not now, but in a few years from now. But you're not afraid of that time when we no, have to No, not at all. I, I know I have many other, uh, opportunities to contribute to the society and also to business. Uh, so I, I look forward also uh -huh. to such more uh, to, uh, opportunity. To uh, replay a little bit of piano maybe. Also, yeah. <laughs> Thomas Sade, thank you very much for that discussion. Thank, thank you. you for the talk.